you're used to seeing things from a particular point of view. That is, from a particular frame of reference. And things look different to us under different circumstances. At the moment, things look... You look peculiar. You're upside down. No, you're the one that's upside down. No, you're upside down. No, I'm not. He's the one that's upside down, isn't he? Well, let's toss for it. All right. Okay. You lose. He's the one that's really upside down. You better come into my frame of reference now. My frame of reference was inverted from what it usually is. That view of things would be normal for me if I normally walked on my hands. This represents a frame of reference. Just three rods stuck together so that each is at right angles to the other two. Now I'm going to move in this direction. You see the frame at the same spot on your screen, but you know I'm moving this way because you see the wall moving this way behind me. But how do you know that I'm not standing still and the wall moving? It was the wall that was moving. Now the wall has disappeared and you have no way of telling whether I am moving or not. But now you know that I'm moving. The point of this is that all motion is relative. In both cases, I was moving relative to the wall, and the wall was moving relative to me. All motion is relative, but we tend to think of one thing as being fixed and the other thing as being moving. We usually think of the Earth as fixed, and walls are usually fixed to the Earth, so perhaps you were surprised the first time when it was the wall that was moving and not Dr. Hume. A frame of reference fixed to the Earth is the most common frame of reference in which to observe the motion of other things. This is the frame of reference that you're used to. The frame is fastened to the table. The table is bolted to the floor, the floor is anchored in the building, and the building is firmly attached to the Earth. Of course, the reason for having three rods is the position of any object, such as this ball, can be specified using these three reference lines. This reference line points in the direction which we call up, which is a different direction here than it is on the other side of the Earth. And these two reference lines specify a plane, which we call horizontal or level. In this film, we're going to look at the motion of objects in this Earth frame of reference and in other frames of reference, moving in different ways relative to the Earth frame. Well, let's look at a motion. This steel ball can be held up by the electromagnet. Now I'm going to open the switch, and you watch the motion of the ball. The ball is accelerated straight down by gravity along a line parallel to this vertical reference line. As you can see, the electromagnet is mounted on a cart that can move. And I'm going to do exactly the same experiment that Dr. Hume did, but this time, while the cart is moving at a constant velocity. The cart is pulled along by a string which is wound around this phonograph turntable, and that pulls it with a constant velocity. When the cart passes this line, the ball is released, as you can see. I'm going to start the cart down at the end of the table so that by the time it gets to this point, I can be sure it's moving with a constant velocity. Now, I want you to watch right here so that you will see the ball falling. I think you can see that the ball landed in exactly the same position that it did before. 
when Dr. Hume did the experiment with the cart fixed. But this time, the ball could not have fallen straight down. Let me show you why. The ball was released. At that point, if it had fallen straight down, because the cart moves on in the time that it takes to fall, it would have landed back here somewhere. But it didn't. Now I'm going to do the experiment again. And this time, I'm going to let you watch the motion through a slow motion camera, which is fixed here. As the cart moves by, the ball will fall, and you can watch in the slow motion camera. I'll show you this again. This time, there'll be a line on the film so that you can see the path. I think that you can see that the path of the ball is a parabola. But all of this has been in a frame of reference fixed to the Earth. How would this motion look in a frame of reference which was moving along with the cart? Frame of reference like that. Well, so that you can see what it looks like, I'm going to fix this slow motion camera so that it moves with the cart. Like this. I'm going to do the experiment again. And incidentally, I'll start it, and then I'm going to stand here so that when the ball falls, you will have something which is fixed as a reference point. In the moving frame of reference, I think you could see that the path of the ball is a vertical straight line. It looks exactly the same as it did before when Dr. Hume did the experiment with the cart fixed. If we were moving along in this frame of reference and we couldn't see the surroundings, then we wouldn't be able to tell by this experiment that we were moving at a constant velocity. As a matter of fact, we wouldn't be able to tell by any experiment that we were moving at a constant velocity. I'm going to do the experiment once more and this time, I'm not going to stand here behind the ball as it falls so that you won't have any fixed reference frame. As far as you're concerned, that time, the cart wasn't necessarily moving at all. That time, when you couldn't see the background, then I think perhaps it was harder for you to realize that you were in a moving frame of reference. The important thing to realize here is that all frames of reference moving at constant velocity with respect to one another are equivalent. Dr. Ivy showed you what the motion of the ball that was released from the moving cart looked like in the Earth frame of reference and in the cart frame. The motion looked simpler from the cart. Now I want you to watch the motion of this white spot. You probably see the spot moving in a circle. But this is what its path is actually like in the Earth frame of reference. This is your normal frame of reference. You saw the spot moving in the circle because your eye moved along with the cart. You put yourself in the frame of reference of the moving cart. So you see, it isn't always true that we view motion from the Earth frame of reference. When the motion is simpler from the moving frame, you automatically put yourself in that moving frame. Now we're going to do another experiment on relative motion to show how to compare the velocity of an object in one frame of reference to its velocity in another frame of reference. If I give this dry ice puck a certain start, it moves straight across the table with a speed which is essentially constant because the forces of friction have been made very small. This is just the law of inertia. An object moves with a constant velocity unless an unbalanced force acts on it. Now, will you give it the same start backwards? I'll try. 
If Dr. Hume gives it the same start, it moves back in this direction with the same velocity. Now we are on a car here, a car which can move and which really is going to move in this direction. And we're going to repeat the experiment. All right, let's go. If we were making measurements here, then we would observe the same velocities, that is the same experimental results that we did before. And so would you, because you are observing this experiment through a camera which is fastened to this car. That is, you are in the moving frame of reference with us. But now we're going to do the experiment again, and this time you watch through a camera which is fixed in the Earth frame of reference. Now concentrate on watching the puck. Don't let your eye follow us. And I think you'll see that it'll move faster that way and not so fast this way, relative to you and relative to the wall behind. Here's the cart, which was moving along in this direction with the velocity u. We were sitting on the card at a table. Here I am over on this side. And uh, Dr. Hume was on this side. And we were pushing this puck back and forth on the table. When I pushed it, it went in this direction with a velocity v. And when Dr. Hume pushed it, it went in this direction with the same velocity v. But this is the velocity relative to the car. What about the velocity relative to an observer on the ground in the fixed frame? Well, if it was pushed in this direction, its velocity is u plus v. If it's in this direction, its velocity is u minus v. This is all very reasonable. There's nothing very hard to understand here. The surprising thing about this expression is that it is not accurate in all circumstances. At very high speeds, and by high speeds I mean speeds close to the velocity of light, this expression breaks down. At these very high speeds, we have to use the ideas about relative motion developed by Albert Einstein in his special theory of relativity. However, for all the speeds that we are ever likely to run into, this expression, u plus or minus v, is completely adequate. So far, we've been talking about frames of reference moving at a constant velocity relative to one another. Now I'm going to do the experiment with the dropping ball again, only this time the cart will be accelerated relative to the Earth frame. These weights will fall and give the cart a constant acceleration. I'll put the ball up and then I will release it. The motion is very fast and I want you to watch at the point where the